many of you have been on the wrong end of not being invited to something? Me too, like plenty of times. In fact, this weekend is the annual ice fishing trip that I go on with uh, some of my buddies each year. And it was this time last year, uh, I'm hanging out, I'm doing whatever, I'm scrolling through Snapchat, and I come across uh, a snap of my buddies, like, ice fishing, having a good old time, and I was pretty salty. And I'm not one to, like, not say anything, so I, like, messaged the video and I said, uh, like, how's it going, man? Looks like you're, you're having fun. You, you catch anything? And, like, I knew full well. Like, I'm there every year. Uh, and I wasn't there this year, so I get this response, and it's like, nah, not too many fish biting this year, but uh, where, where are you at? Like, how come you're not here? Uh, to which I replied, well, I wasn't invited. Uh, now, it turns out that extending that invite, uh, uh, not extending that invite was an accident. Um, it got lost in the Facebook group or whatever. Uh, but it's kind of like we talked about in the first week of this series about being left out uh, and how no one likes to be left out. Uh, so this is the third week of our series called Deep. And who can tell me what our Deep series is all about? Yell it out. Going deeper in your faith. Yeah, it's all about how we can go deeper in our relationship with Jesus. So before we go any further tonight, I just want to clarify a couple of things. Uh, forgive me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go on some side tangents, but I'm sure you guys can follow along. So I mentioned in the first week of the series, uh, but I haven't really been keeping up with this, and I mentioned how going deeper is not going to be like one specific thing that we all do. If the goal at Student Life and the goal at RCC is not to get everyone on the same page, but to get everyone to flip whatever next page is theirs. Uh, and so for all of us, we're in a different place in our relationship with Jesus. So it's my goal to, that when I get up here each week that I'm able to equip each of you to take that next step with Jesus no matter where you guys are at. Uh, some of you may not have a relationship with Jesus at all, and that's all right. And some of you might feel like you're ready um, to come give a message yourself. That's awesome. Uh, but my guess is that most of us are probably somewhere in between. Uh, and so that's why it's my goal to provide something for you guys each week that can move the needle a little bit for each of you. So the first week was about how everyone fits here at Student Life. Uh, and that's an easy one. Like, be kind to people. Super easy. You don't need to have a relationship with Jesus to be kind to people. But if you do, if you made that personal decision to follow Jesus, then uh, it's even more important to go out of your way uh, to make people feel like they belong. Last week, we talked about connection and the importance of choosing your friends wisely. And again, like, you don't have to be a Christian to choose your friends wisely. You don't have to have uh, a relationship with Jesus to surround yourself with uh, good people. But if you do, if you do have a relationship with Jesus, it's even more important to choose your friends wisely. Uh, this week, it's going to be like a little bit different, though. Uh, like I said, we're talking about inviting, and as we talk about inviting people, there might be a difference in the invitation you extend depending on where you're at in your relationship with Jesus. Uh, so in Matthew chapter 8, it's the last book of Matthew. Jesus has already died on the cross for our sins, and he's came back, and he's visited hundreds of people already. And in Matthew chapter 8, he goes and he visits his disciples who have been with him since day one of his ministry. And it says this. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. That's submitting to God's will, like Matt was saying during the song. And, and be sure of this. I'm with you always, even to the edge of the age. End of the age. Now, I want you guys to, like, close your eyes and imagine that. Jesus' disciples just watched Jesus die on the cross. Now he's standing before them, telling them to go and tell everyone about him. 
don't know about you, but I'd be like, I don't know, Jesus. That sounds like a death wish. And the fact is, it was. Many of Jesus' earlier followers were killed as they went out and told others about Jesus. But now this passage is what entire churches and ministries are built upon today. And so this is Jesus telling us, you and I, to go tell others about him. Jesus is saying here, if you believe in me after all the things I have done and shown you, then it's now your responsibility to go out and tell others. And even though we didn't, like, live and walk alongside Jesus, this is something that he's still calling us to do today. And this is where things might look a little bit different when it comes to inviting people. Now, real quick, told you I was going to go on some tangents. Stick with me. We're still talking about inviting, but I want to give you another little backstory. I want to talk about this whole relationship with Jesus thing. Because if you're like me, before I was a Christian, I was like, I would hear my sister talking about, like, having a relationship with Jesus, and I'd be like, what the, what in the world is this all about? What does that even mean? And so you might be thinking to yourself that very thing right now or over the last couple weeks. So I just want to break it down for you guys, right? So to have a relationship with Jesus means first to believe. To believe that Jesus is who he says he is. To believe that Jesus is the Son of God who came down to live a perfect life to die on the cross for our sins so that we could be with God in heaven after this life. Then, to have a relationship with Jesus means that we spend time hearing from him through his word and through the Holy Spirit. It means that we literally converse with him through prayer and allow our life to be guided by the Holy Spirit and how the Bible tells us we should live our lives. So to build a relationship with Jesus, we need to do it just like we would any other relationship. Generally, friendships or relationships don't happen overnight, uh, but sometimes they do. Uh, and, and that's the same thing with Jesus. Um, for the most part, it's going to take some time. So you first might learn about him uh, from reading your Bible. Then you might decide that you believe that he is real. And uh, I just want to take this time, like, if you have decided uh, in your heart that you believe that Jesus is real, that you want a relationship with him, that you want him to be a part of your life, that you want him to transform your life and spend eternity in heaven with him, we can all do that right now. Right now. In fact, if that's something that you want to do, if you become a student, excited right now because I'm sick, but I honestly am so pumped for you. I would love it if you saved that prayer, if you came up and talked to me after the message. Probably maybe like, let's go on the side and like reach out to me on Instagram because I kind of want to jet to get home and go to bed, but um, I'm pumped because your life just changed forever. The decision you just made to give your life for Christ will single-handedly be the best decision you will make in your entire life. My life is a night and day difference from where I used to be, and now your, yours can too. So that's how you start a relationship with Jesus, right? And now to continue in that relationship, you got to treat it just like any other relationship you have. 
And what did I say that you got to do next? What's the next part of, of building a relationship? I said it just a little bit ago. What's that? No. You get to know him more. Just like any other relationship, you might meet somebody for the first time, but you're never going to be friends if you don't get to know them. You're never going to be friends if you don't get to know their likes or their dislikes. And so you can get to know Jesus more through reading your Bible, like I said earlier. And Jesus often spoke in parables. Uh, and parables are kind of like these stories that the stories that help us to understand what exactly he expects from us. So check this one out. This is a good one. In Matthew 13, it says, That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it with all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he scattered the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but the soil was shallow. When the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. And still, and this is it right here, other seeds fell on good soil. And when they fell on that good soil, they produced a crop, a hundred, a sixty, or thirty times what was actually sown. And Jesus was famous for saying this. Whoever has ears, let them hear. That's kind of like, if you understand it, good, I'm proud of you. So let me tell you something. The seed that fell on that good soil is the person who reads their Bible, who prays often and surrounds themselves with people who can help you grow in your faith, just like we talked about last week. So, did anyone notice what I just did there? I just invited you all. I invited you to be in a relationship with Jesus and walk you through what that looks like. And that's one way to invite others to know Jesus. If you have been in a relationship with Jesus for a while now, if you spend time reading the Bible and growing closer to him, you can do this
interested in going to Colorado. Middle schoolers, I had something on the line for an awesome camp for the summer, and it fell through. I'm not forgetting about you. I will find.